The first max-min problem I'm going to take a look at is problem number two on page 388. If you want to take a look at this, uh, it's a hotel, and in the hotel, the rooms are supposed to be 350 square feet. There are supposed to be six rooms in this motel, I suppose a motel six, so to speak. And I want to find the dimensions for the rooms that result in the minimum total length of the walls. So when you do these problems, first of all, you want to figure out, figure out what needs to be maximized or minimized, and you want to write an equation for that. Uh, it's length of walls, so I need to find some way to describe that. These do not have to be square rooms, so I'm going to make these rooms have uh, dimensions that are x by y. I'll use y for the vertical walls and x's for the horizontal walls. And I'm minimizing the total length of walls. So the equation is essentially, it's essentially a perimeter. Um, I'm not going to call it a perimeter exactly, I'll just call it um, f of x. But the function that I'm going to minimize, or you can call it p of x if you really like, uh, is going to come from this. Uh, notice there's six rooms. I have one, two, three, four, five, six x's, but each of those x's is doubled, so that's 12x plus, and then my y's, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven y's. That's the function I'm going to try to minimize. Uh, if you take a look at Forrester's suggestions, Forrester suggests several things uh, for max min problems. If you take a look at his list, first of all, he says, make a sketch if you haven't already drawn one. I've done that. You want to write an equation for the variable you're trying to maximize or minimize. I've done that. You want to write the equation in terms of one variable and specify a domain. Um, in this case, of course, the domain uh, is going to be well, essentially our x values are going to have to be positive and uh, that's really the, the important thing. Obviously, we've got to hold to that 350 square feet. Um, the other thing that I always suggest is trying to find some type of restriction equation if you need to replace a variable. Okay, typically, there's something that tells you something else about your variables. Uh, here, in this case, you'll notice that each room is 350 square feet. Well, how do you find the area of a room? You multiply the length times the width. x times y has to equal 350. So in this case, I'm going to replace the y variable. Um, I'm going to solve for y here, so I'll divide both sides by x, and I know that y is equal to 350 over x. That's what I'm going to replace in this equation up here. So uh, my new equation is f of x equals 12x plus 7 times 350 over x. Okay, 7 times 350 is 2450. So f of x is equal to 12x plus 2450x to the negative 1 power. I'm going to write it that way so I have something that's a little bit easier to work with. And at this point, uh, remember the minimum value would take place where the derivative is equal to zero or possibly at the endpoints of the domain. A uh, big thing here, uh, x has to be greater than zero. And really, if you think about it, having room widths of zero really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I really don't think that's going to come into play in this problem, but we'll check at the end and make sure we're getting values that make sense. Um, so the minimum value is going to take place when the derivative is equal to zero or at one of those endpoints if we do need to check that. Uh, and so in this case that's going to be 12 plus uh, that's a negative 2450 x to the negative 2 when I take the derivative and I want to find out what's going to make that equal to zero. So I'm going to say zero equals 12 minus 2450 over x squared, write it in that form. So I have negative 12 is equal to 
negative 2450 over x squared. And I think at this point I'll go ahead and cross multiply. So I get negative 12 x squared equals negative 2450. I divide negative 2450 by 12, I end up getting 204 and a sixth. So let's see here. So x squared is equal to Twelve twenty-five six. And so if I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to find out that x is equal to the square root of twelve twenty-five is actually thirty-five over radical six. Um, if you need to write this in simplified form, you can rationalize the denominator here. That's going to be thirty-five radical six over six is my final dimension for x and if I need to I can substitute back in and find y. Uh, so 35 radical 6 that is approximately x is approximately 14.289 feet. Remember that the dimensions always have to be values that give me a an area of 350 square feet. So I can go back uh, basically I know that 350 has to be equal to my value of x times y. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my 35 radical 6 over 6 times my y value. Divide by 36 radical si uh, 35 radical 6 over 6. So that's going to be 35 radical 6 uh, over 6 that both sides get multiplied by. That's going to knock out that value there when I multiply by that. Uh, of course the 35 and the 35 cancel. I get 60 over radical 6 equals y. And 60 over radical 6 is approximately 24.49 feet and uh, those dimensions then do give me a room with an area of 350 square feet and that's where the minimum value is going to take place. Now technically I should also check this domain value here. Um, X cannot be less than zero. So technically the cutoff of this boundary would be at, at zero, but a room with a width of zero doesn't make any sense. So my smallest value should be right there at that value, and that should be all I need to do to finish this problem. So those are the dimensions of my room that has an area of 350 square feet and has the minimum wall length required.